Hello, viewers. You can watch all episodes of this video right now on Patreon. If you can pledge a small monthly donation as low as $2 on Patreon, you can watch exclusive videos, bonus content, get free merchandise, and much, much more. Just go to patreon.com slash Christian Kids. We turn the best lessons from our faith into interesting animated videos and share them online. With your support, we'll be able to make more videos and invest more in the quality of each video. So what do you say? Every little bit helps, and your kindness will be rewarded with some pretty awesome perks. If you are not in a position to support us financially, then please do pray for us. Prayer support is very important for our mission. We hope you enjoy the video. Thank you. Vincent was a man of action rather than of theory. The religious spirit he communicated was simple, practical, and straightforward. He looked to Christ as his leader and tried to translate the gospel message into concrete results. Let us learn about this amazing saint today. Vincent was born during a time not unlike today, a time marred by war disease, and poverty. Vincent was born at Poi in Gascony, in the south of France in 1581, the third child in a family of four sons and two daughters. He was born in a peasant family, capable of making ends meet only through hard work and frugality. Vincent had to take the cattle to pasture, the sheep, the cows, and the pigs. He did this every day, barefoot and with humble provisions. His parents recognized that he was clever and creative and sacrificed to send him to school. His first formal education was provided by the Franciscans. He did so well, he was hired to tutor the children of a nearby wealthy Gandhi family. The assignment taught him a principle for his future work evangelize the rich and direct them to serve the poor. Vincent was also ambitious. He wanted out of the peasant life and decided that the priesthood was the best way to acquire a career, family security, and a respectable position in society. He used the monies he earned teaching to continue his formal studies at the University of Toulouse, where he studied theology. At age 19, he was ordained a priest and headed to Rome to complete his education. One day, while he was traveling by sea, a group of pirates attacked them and captured Vincent. He was later sold into slavery. Eventually, in time, Vincent was able to convince his master. His master agreed to be converted to Christianity and set Vincent free. Vincent arrived in Rome and then traveled later to Paris. Throughout his teens, Vincent's attitude was, what's in it for me? It was here that he met Cardinal Pierre de Berulle, who later became his spiritual guide. In Paris, Vincent came under him, who gradually caused him to see that helping others was more important than helping himself. At that time, Vincent observed that many poorly catechized peasants were not making good confessions. He also noticed that inadequately trained priests did not know how to administer the sacrament of penance. One day, Vincent preached a parish mission that pointed to his future. He stirred so many people to repentance 
that Jesuits from a nearby town had to help hear confessions. By now, he had influenced a number of young men, some of them priests, to join him in forming a religious group to be called the Congregation of the Mission. Members obligated themselves to pattern their lives on Christ, to take the gospel to the rural poor, and to help educate priests in their practical duties. The priests mainly conducted parish missions, preaching and hearing confessions. He became a chaplain to the Count of Goyne and was placed in charge of distributing money to the deserving poor. From that point forward, he spent his life preaching missions to and providing relief to the poor. Vincent went to many places to visit the sick, the elderly, and the poor. He spent time with them and did what he could to take care of them. He established organizations of men and women to provide aid to the poor and sick. But Vincent knew it would take more than what he could do on his own to really make a difference. He realized he needed more money and more people to help all those who needed help. Vincent began to ask wealthy people to donate money that he distributed to the sick and poor of his community. Vincent was so nice and charming that the wealthy didn't mind giving him money, especially for such a worthy cause. He also gathered other men and women who were willing to dedicate their lives to God and help the poor. Each day, he and his followers gave soup and bread to as many as 16,000 poor and homeless. The men formed into the religious community of priests called the Vincentians. In the 1620s, Vincent met a holy collaborator, a woman who would become a saint in her own right, Louise de Marillac. Louise and Vincent together co-founded the Daughters of Charity, a group of more than 25,000 members worldwide today. Many parishioners today have a St. Vincent de Paul Society, which carries on Vincent's work with the poor. Vincent helped reform the clergy and the manner in which they were instructed and prepared for the priesthood. He did this first through the presentation of retreats and later by helping develop a precursor to our modern-day seminaries. At one point, his community was directing 53 upper-level seminaries. For over three decades, Vincent worked tirelessly to raise awareness of the needs of those who were poor. In his last years, Vincent was confined to an armchair because of his swollen and ulcerous legs. But he remained cheerful directing his charitable works by writing hundreds of letters. He died on September 27, 1660, and was canonized a saint in 1737. St. Vincent did not start with grandiose plans. He actually stumbled into his life's work. Thus, he is a helpful model for those who suffer stress trying to find God's plan for their lives. St. Vincent's life was a perfect example of how deep compassion can change our lives and communities. Noble St. Vincent de Paul, beloved servant of the poor, may we follow your example and do good works among those whom society has abandoned, enslaved, or forgotten. Inspire us to feed the hungry, to love a child, to provide comfort and medicine for the sick, to clothe those whose garments are threadbare, and to offer hope and our Lord's words to all who need respite. Pray for us to our beloved God that we may commit ourselves selflessly to doing the same charitable acts that you did all your life and intercede with them that we may have the favor of his guidance and strength and love upon this important and meaningful work. Amen. Hello, viewers. Sorry for interrupting the video. 
I just wanted to take a moment to request you to pray for us and donate if you can. If you can donate just $5, Christian Kids TV can keep making more videos like this. If you are not in a position to donate, then do pray for us. In fact, prayer support is very important to our mission. Thanks for your time, and we hope you enjoy the video.